want to say that I'm extremely delighted to be back at the Ministry of Finance. This is the fourth time that I'm becoming a member of the team of the Ministry of Finance. First time was when I just graduated from the university in 1979. My first job ever was uh, here at the Minister of Finance. I came back later as uh, advisor to Minister Kateri Kalumba during the PRSP days, you remember, RST. Then I was back as Secretary to the Treasury. I was back as Minister of Finance and I'm back again as the Minister of Finance, so I'm not totally lost. There are a few changes that have taken place uh, physically and uh, uh, also in terms of ideas, but I have a very good understanding of this place because of the history that I've just indicated. I also want to thank uh, the President, uh, President Ichilema, for showing confidence that he can come back to the Minister of Finance to lead his economic team. And all I can say is that I will not disappoint him and I will not disappoint the people of Zambia. We are here to do great things as an economic team under his administration. I'll come back to that point in a while. In the meantime, I want to say that uh, the ministry that I'm coming to is obviously uh, quite different from the one I left in 2011 in terms of the economic environment that we are experiencing as a country today. The economic environment meaning that the cost of living is escalated beyond what we had uh, imagined. Obviously, uh, the exchange rate, where it is today, or where it had reached, none of us ever dreamt that a dollar one day would cost even 20 kwacha. Because those days, if it reached five or even six, there would be panic. Uh, but today, we, that is the situation. The dollar has become very expensive. But all this really, in summary is that the people of Zambia are stressing economically, the people of Zambia are stressing. I must also add that uh, this stress, this economic stress has its roots here in the Ministry of Finance. The stress arises from the fact that Zambia over a relatively short period of time has just borrowed too much money borrow too much money, meaning that as we pay back there's little liquidity for those running businesses to have customers, meaning that it has become hard for the government to hire essential workers such as teachers, health workers, or indeed even to provide uh, meaningful salary increments to the workers of the public service. So that's the difference that I come to, which was not there before. And it is this difference, it is this stress that has led the people of Zambia, more especially the youth, more especially the youth, to say to our colleagues, the one who were in charge before, please go and take a rest. Let's try a different team. Therefore, this administration, we are focusing, or we are going to focus a lot in economic issues. We don't care much about how your nose looks like. We don't care much about whether you are tall or short. We don't care much about what language you speak. That is not our politics. Our politics is what can we do to reduce and to remove the stress that the people of Zambia are experiencing. How can we create jobs, jobs for the millions of youth who are roaming the streets, starting from those who have just ended grade seven, 
grade 9, grade 12, university graduates, because unemployment is now right across the whole spectrum of society. So our focus will be how to generate, not how to generate, but to generate jobs for the young people through, number one, those where government is able to hire or should hire, like teachers and uh, health workers, Within our means, we are going to put a lot of, we are going to put some steam into that. We know that there are about 50,000 trained teachers alone who are out there looking for jobs in the teaching service. And indeed, those jobs are necessary. Those of us running rural constituencies, we know that teachers are desperately needed. So we'll do something about that problem so that perhaps in the next five years we can get back to normal whereby essential workers such as teachers, health workers are employed and put on payroll. That is the contribution of the uh, government but there's a limit to which government can do to absorb the youth of the streets. How many teachers can we employ? How many policemen can we employ? These are just thousands, but we know there are millions of young people looking for jobs. And those jobs must come from the private sector. So you see what we are going to do. We are going to do a lot to drive up the agenda in the private sector. We will push hard to make sure that our mining sector expands. The mining output has been stuck for the last 10 years at about 800,000 metric tons of copper per year. We are going to push aggressively so that mining output in the next 10 years comes to something like 3 million tons. By the end of the, this current mandate, we want to push mining output to something close to 2 million tons per annum from 800,000. Why? Because Mining, as you know, is the one that gives foreign exchange, is the one that gives some employment, is the one that provides employment in the main sectors that are related to mining, transport, banking, insurance, repairs, spares, construction, all those are related to mining. So we are going to push very hard for the mining sector and the good thing is that the price of copper is projected to remain high for many, many years. It's going to be the new oil. In the 1970s, oil was the in thing. Now copper is the in thing because cars are no longer going to be used petrol. They are moving towards uh, electrical uh, systems. So we are going to push the production of copper by creating a good environment for more investments to be, to be done. And you'll be amazed how much foreign exchange this country is going to make with this price of copper. You will not, you will not know what to do with the dollars that this country will be receiving. Our problem may be just be the dollar becoming too cheap as we drive this process. We are going to make sure that there's value addition we are going to persuade credible investors to put investments into these multi-facility economic zones which have been dormant in the last 10 years so that in those emphases we can draw copper wires in those emphases we can do copper alloys you see like that lock there the one that looks like gold that's a copper alloy, copper mixed with something else, which currently is imported. Our job is to make sure that items like those, items like fridges, which use a lot of copper, items like starter motors, we are going to push to make sure that those populate the special or multi facility economic zones so that you, the young people, have a wider choice of jobs to get into. This
juices that we import from South Africa, whether it is mango juice, whether it is orange juice, whether it is purple juice, we want to be the ones exporting those items into South Africa, into Europe, into the Americans. So there's going to be aggression to make sure that we produce these items in large quantities, value process within Zambia, and export. So this cotton will make sure that our farmers would get good incentives to grow cotton so that it is spun here. Out of that, we make cloth. Out of that, we are the ones to be exporting jeans, t-shirts, shirts, bed sheets, and so forth. So this is just a brief flavor of the agenda that we have to drive the economy to grow. Ten years ago, people were saying economic growth doesn't matter. Now you've seen for yourself what happens when there's no economic growth. You've seen for yourself when they have negative economic growth. Look at the poverty that is there, that is emerged. Because when there's no growth, it simply means there's no the earning power of the country is uh, going backwards. And when the earning power of the country is going backward, what it means is that on average, on average, each one of us would be poorer than before. That's why these economists will tell you that the per capita GDP or the average income per person, it has gone down. And that's not surprising because the growth of the economy is done what? It's talking a nose knife. So our challenge is to stop the economy declining, put it in the opposite direction very aggressively. And I want to say, we are benchmarking, our, we are benchmarking ourselves very aggressively. Benchmarking means what we intend to be in the next 10, 15 years. We want to be like Mauritius. We want to be like Malaysia. We want to be like Thailand so that the wheels of the economy grow. We, it's no longer about saying uh, we want economic growth, but really we want to transform. So this is what the, pre uh, the leadership of President Hakainde is bringing to the table, how to transform this economy beyond anything that we've ever seen before. It's a very aggressive, very aggressive, now, to our, my colleagues here in the Minister of Finance, you've got a flavor of what we're aiming at. And we are the ones to facilitate that by making sure that money that is wasted on frivolous things is now invested into things that matter. When I talk about, for example, uh, when I talk about uh, producing three million tons of copper. There is a role for government, there is a role for private sector. Our role as government is to make sure that this infrastructure going to where copper ores are discovered. You can't say there's copper there, but there's no road going there, there's no power going there. Yes, copper is there, but you will not be able to mine. When we are talking about tourism, it's no good to say we have animals, we have Victoria Falls, we have uh, this and that. These items are in the bush. How do you go into Lua, where I come from, and say, uh, want tourists, where are they going to sleep? Under the tree? Yes, they can sleep under the tree, but they will leave very little money. So the idea is to make sure that infrastructure, which is the responsibility of government, ST, goes to where it can unlock investment. That's our duty at the Minister of Finance. Our duty is to make sure that we collect taxes so that we can train our people, train the young people, they are skilled, so that all these investments that we are talking about, the Zambians are not bystanders. The Zambians are participants because they can supply, they can work, pro provide professional services, so that is the agenda, Mr. Uh, ST.
the money is going to be utilized carefully on things that assist the social sector, on things that generate more revenue for the country, so that growth keeps on exploding. Wastage is to come to the end. As you see me here, I say that the 10 years when I was a private member of parliament representing a rural constituency, for me that was very good training. Very good training because I've, when we talk about shortage of teachers, I've seen it. Schools where I went, primary school where I went before going to secondary in uh, Hillcrest and Livingston, that primary school today is a basic school. But the number of teachers who are there are less than the number of teachers who were there when it was only up to grade seven. <coughs> so that's why you heard the president talking about taking money to where it belongs. That is us here at the Minister of Finance. No useless seminars, no useless trips, because that money must be saved to go to where the rural people are suffering things that I've seen with my own eyes in the last 10 years. Many of you have never slept in a swamp. I've slept in a swamp. Maybe one of these days we should go in and sleep in a swamp <laughs> so that you see uh, what we are talking about. Um, issues of corruption. No one will protect you. If you are found in corruption, straight away to ACC. No one will protect you. So if there were schemes like that, say bye-bye to them. Issues of failing to deliver service. Come tomorrow, come tomorrow. License is taking seven years to produce. I've seen situations like that. We are going to agree ST. We call the private sector. What kind of service do we deliver here? ABC. We agree that if an application for a particular license or something like that, if all the paperwork is correct, we have to commit ourselves that within X number of days, without question, this service must be delivered. If we don't deliver, the one who is supposed to deliver on that we have to answer questions, serious questions, serious questions. Commissioner General, I believe you've already started some of those things, but we are going to push very hard to make sure that we provide service to the people of Zambia. Let me end here because I've actually gone beyond what I'd intended.